Alright guys, so welcome back to part 2 of my trading view tutorial for 2021. In this video we will focus on the tools we use to perform our technical analysis. So we will be looking at the toolbar and tools such as trend lines, how to draw on the chart, take a look at the Fibonacci tool, some risk reward ratios and more. And before starting I just want to mention that I'm really trying to be as clear as possible in this video. So if you think I'm too slow there is an option on youtube which you can use to speed me up i also want to mention here that you can see this pop-up i just got on my screen uh, you will get this one all the time if you are not signed up for trading view and if you want to i will have a link both in the description but also in the pinned comment down below uh, which you can use to sign up for trading view and to sign up for trading view is you know free and i think the free version of trading view is you know very good to to start off with but if you use the link in the description and then later on decide to upgrade to a a premium version or even a pro pro version then you can get up to a $30 bonus from that plan and at the same time help the channel out so definitely make sure to be signed up before you start uh, messing around with the chart if you want to avoid this annoying pop-up that you will get all the time if you're not signed up but all right I think we're ready to jump into the video now so let me just refresh here real quick. And before watching this video, I really recommend you to watch part one if you want to learn how to get started with TradingView and you know how to set up the chart, how to search for the financial asset you want to analyze and you know some very basic how to get started guide. I will link the part one up in the eye in the corner. But in this video, we are going to focus on the tools and the toolbar. And right now I have gold open on the chart here and every candlestick represents one day so now we're ready to take a look at the toolbar so what do we have here well at the very top the first sort of tool right here is basically cursors so if you click this arrow right here you can choose what kind of cursor you want to have the default is the cross and i really like the cross because i think it's nice to see a horizontal and vertical line when you do your analysis but if you want to you can use a dot instead or the classic arrow uh, the eraser here is something you can use later on when you draw but i i never use the erasers don't pay too much attention to that one so I'm going to use the cross right here as a default pretty easy decision for me and if we go down here the next button is the where we have all, all our trend lines this is our trend line tools so let's open this open this one up and the tool on the top here is a tool you will use a lot this is the classic trend line tool and this tool have a shortcut so if you are on the chart and you want to open this tool uh, without clicking on it then you just click alt and t you will have a small window pop up and now you have your trend line and can draw your trend line but it's not too complicated to also click here and just press the trend line if you want to draw one so if you want to draw a trend line the first thing you need to do is to identify a trend and how do i identify a trend well if we have an uptrend we are making higher highs and at the same time higher lows uh, and a classic downtrend is the same thing but opposite we are making lower highs and lower lows so for example right here i'm going to use the uh, paintbrush i will go in more detail later on how to use this one right here in front of me we have a downtrend how can we see this well we have we have a high right here lower high lower high so three clear lower highs and we also have low lower low lower low lower low so this right here looks to be a clear down sloping trend so now we are ready to short this trend and to do that we go to our toolbar click trend line and when we draw our trend here there are basically two methods or there are more but you can either anchor from the wicks so let me scroll in a bit here so when you anchor from wick to wick the wick is sort of the small line that are above and below the large part of the candlestick so we anchor here from the wick it touches another wick right there and another wick right there so here we have a pretty clear trend line you can see we have one touch there one touch there pretty much one touch there and almost a fourth touch right there so this is a pretty clean down sloping trend and if you want to draw the bottom line you can press the trend line again right there 
and this one is a bit harder to draw but i would probably draw this one as if you're drawing from wick to wick you could draw this one something like like this so here we have a pretty nice and clear down sloping trend line and if you want the upper line to be exactly the same slope as the lower line then we can we can delete this lower line right now and then you go up you take your cursor so you take make sure you are here on the cross you press this upper line you click Control c to copy and then Control v to paste now you have the exact same line right here and you can just basically drag this one to the bottom so this is if you want you know a line with the exact same slope most of the time you will not get a such a you know perfect trend but it is a nice way to you know short up the general trend the general trend so to speak and what can we see right here in this example? This was actually very beautiful. You can see we had one, two, three, four touches. And when we actually broke this trend, you know, gold saw a very strong impulse here to the upside. That is a short, short tutorial how to draw trend lines. If we go down here, we have two more ways to draw trend lines. I don't use them too much. You have something called an info line. And when you use this trend, you will get some information about the trend, such as you can see the angle changes. So when we have this, this one up like this, it's 90 degrees. Here we have 45 degrees. And you can also see the bars, how long the trend is and stuff like that. But personally, I don't find this one too useful. You also have this, you know, trend angle where you can see where you can see the angle right here, but not, I don't really use them. In this one, we're going to focus on the most basic things. And the next most basic thing I use here is the horizontal line. So how do we use the horizontal lines? Well, we can just scroll down here a bit and we can see that prior to this trend channel right here, we made a local top. So the highest top right here. And what we can do here is that we can use our horizontal line right here. And to draw the horizontal line, we just click and we can drag this one down a bit and now we can see if this is a significant level you can see that sellers stepped up right here and when we broke this one we saw a pretty pretty respectable uh, force to the upside and the cool thing here is that we can see that this was previous resistance but if we look a bit left here we can see that this exact level for gold this level was at around 1452 then later on this level acted as support. So that is a common principle in trading that previous resistance flips and becomes support. And if you look even more left here, you can see this is so beautiful in my opinion. You can see that the crash we had here in March, we saw a you know very strong impulse to the downside. But where exactly did the buyer step up? Well, at this horizontal level. So what do we use the hor horizontal level levels for well we use them to find historically significant levels where there are more likely for buyers uh, when we're talking about support or for sellers when we're talking about resistance to step up so apparently this level at around 1452 is a significant level because we saw this one as resistance many times as support and as support again so we use these horizontal lines to to identify key levels. If we once again open the tools right here, uh, you have a lot of a lot of tools, but I don't use most of them too much. Here, for example, you have a vertical line. So this is the exact same principle, but the line is vertical. So if, if we use this one, you will have a line that goes from up and down. Don't really use that one too much. You also have just under that one, you have the cross line, which makes one horizontal and one vertical line at the same time. I don't really use that one too much either. We have some more advanced tools here. You have, for example, the regression trend, and this one will create a trend based on, you know, a regression. And that is a st statistical, you know, method to create the trend. So for example, so if we use this one, mathematics will take the lines that are best fitted, you know, an average line on the top and bottom that is best fitted to the trend. So this trend will look differently. For example, if we go from there to there, 
we will have a trend that looks like this. So the upper and lower and middle line in this one is, you know, sort of averages of the highs and the lows. But I don't use this one too much either. So now let's go and take a look at some more stuff I actually use. So when we go down to the third bottom right here, we have some, some you know, Fibonacci tools and similar stuff. And in this video, I will focus on the one I use the most. And this is the classic good old Fibonacci retracement. And now we got this, you know, annoying pop-up window. And this I will get all the time because I'm not logged in. So I have to refresh and everything will be gone. So make sure to, you know, sign up if you don't want to lose ev everything every time. So now I will just show real quick how to use the Fibonacci tool. So we open our window right here. It says GAN and Fibonacci tools. And we go down here to where it says Fib Retracement. You can also open this one quickly by clicking on Alt and F at the same time. But now we just manually click at our Fibonacci Retracement. And I'm just going to show real quick how to use this one. But if you want me to later on create a video on Fibonacci and more in depth how to use the Fibonacci tool, please leave a comment down below and say that you want to, you know, see that uh, there are a lot of things you can learn about Fibonacci. But right now, let's just say that we want to find, we want to find a high and a low, a swing high and a swing low. One could argue here that if we take the very high right now, by the way, we are on Bitcoin. So we take the very high for Bitcoin and we anchor down to the low of the swing. So here is the low, here is the high. Our, what our Fibonacci tool does is that it has some, some levels that is based on the Fibonacci numbers, which is a mathematical you know, ratio that we see a lot, not only in nature, but we see this ratio in many things. And some people argue that we see this ratio a lot in trading as well. And a lot of traders are using the Fibonacci tool, which kind of makes it you know, work uh, on its own. But anyways, what you can see here is that you have different values. You have a value of one right there. Here it says 0 0.786, 0 0.618, and so on and so on. And this is basically percentages of the move. So for example, what this 0 0.786 basically means is that from the low here up to that level, up to the 0 0.786 level, that is around 78% of the whole move. And the whole move is from the bottom to the very top. So this right here is 78% of the whole move. And if you, for example, take a look at the 0.5 level, so the area, so the line right here, so from the low to there, that is 50% of the move. And if we go from the low to the to the line right here, that is, I'm not, I'm not sure if you can see it, but you can see that that is the 0.236 level. So that is around 24% of the move. And according to Fibonacci theory, this is, these are some common levels for the price to reverse. And in this case of Bitcoin, can we actually, did we actually reverse at some key Fibonacci levels? Well, what we can see here is that the first high we printed after this move was pretty much exactly at the 0.786 level. Then we went down, went up. The next sort of high was pretty much at the 0.618 level. So in this case, the Fibonacci levels seem to be pretty respected here for Bitcoin. So we have lots of more advanced tools right here, uh, which I can make videos on in the future. But right now, I think we will stop right there. The next thing we will look at is our bottom that says geometric shapes. So let's open this one up. And the first one is the brush. And the brush, I have been using this whole video and this is basically when I draw on the chart. So when you have selected a brush, you can just hold, hold your mouse button and then you can draw anything. You also have some options right here. There will pop up a window with some, with some options. If you click this pen right here, you can change the color. So let's say we want to have, you know, uh, pink, then we can draw in pink right here. And if we want to change a color of something we already drew, then we can basically make sure that we have our cross here. We click this one, press the pen, and then we can sh change the color. And if you want to delete it, you can just select that one and press delete. So that is how you use the brush tool. You also have a highlighter right here that is, that is the exact same principle, but with, you know, uh, 
a larger pen. One thing I'm using a lot actually is the rectangle. So let's select the rectangle right here. And the rectangle is basically if you if you select this one and then hold and drag, you will create a rectangle. So what do you actually use this one from for? Well, I personally use this one to measure moves. And this, I won't go into detail in this video, but right here, in my opinion, Bitcoin looks like sort of a wedge pattern. So let me just draw this one real quick. And to measure a move, what we do right here, this is called a wedge. And to measure a move, we use our rectangle right here and we measure how large is the move. And a common principle to, you know, set targets is to use this rectangle, measure the move, and then we copy this one. So as you know from previously, you click Control C and then Control V. And then you will get a new rectangle here. So you use your, you use your cross and then you can basically drag this one. So if Bitcoin breaks out at this point right here, in order to reach the 100% measure move, Bitcoin would have to go all the way up here to around uh, 48K. But at the same time, we do the same thing. We copy this one, control V, control C. If it breaks to the downside, then the 100% measured move would take Bitcoin all the way down to around 15.5 thousand. So this is what I use the rectangles for. To delete them, we, we select our cross and we just press everyone, click on everyone and then press, press delete. So delete, delete, delete. You have some more stuff right here that you can mess around with, with, but the things I'm using the most is the brush and the rectangle. The bottom under is the annotation tools. I don't really use this one too much, but you can use this one to you know write something. Maybe you, you want to write a note to yourself, like this is bullish or something similar then you can use the text to delete, press that one, click delete. But to not make this video too long, I will actually split this one up. So I will continue with this video uh, in a later part. But guys, if you feel like you got any kind of help or value from this video, please consider dropping a like. And if you guys are interested in more similar content, you know, more educational content, then don't hesitate to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day and I hope I will catch you in the next video. But for now guys, take care. Ciao, ciao.